I was pretty excited when I spotted this at the thrift store mixed in with the music CDs. Something I hadn't seen in probably 20 years. A strictly MS-DOS shareware CD-ROM. I had my eye on this one in particular when I was a kid loitering around my local Zeller's computer department. It was the 90s, and any time my parents would need to wait in a long winding line, I'd try to sneak off to stare at the computer software. The big box PC games are usually a disappointment. They tended to stock a lot of expensive educational software or Microsoft or Broderpen games. That stuff was in school. That stuff was boring. It didn't make any bold proclamations. It wasn't groundbreaking, alter smooth, rocking strategic fighting action with dark forces and dragons. It certainly was no arcade action heroes poor pack collection published by Laser Magic in 1995. All of these games are freely available online now, but I really wanted a hard copy of a few of these on a press disc. Jazz Jackrabbit, One Must Fall, and Hocus Pocus are the first games I tend to go to when setting up a DOS PC for gaming. They're easy to install and configure, they support various sound cards, and have hands-off demo modes. Mystic Towers was completely new to me. I had no idea how I missed this game for all these years. Looking at the suggested pricing in the back of the booklet, I can see why this particular compilation would have eluded child me. It would have been about $15 or $20 Canadian, an absurd sum of money when I was trying to save up for SimCity. Most of these games would have really put my childhood third-hand spare parts monstrosity PC to the test. I don't think I ever managed to get jazz running well on that thing. Well, in present day I've got a similar problem but for different reasons. The perplexing Runtime Error 200. Two of the games in this collection simply won't run. They display the Runtime Error 200 and return to the command line. I'll go over what causes it, and cover a few ways to get around it, but first, let's install our games. Up first is Jazz Jackrabbit, a high energy platform shooter that I'm terrible at. Rescue the Princess Eva Earlong from the evil turtle emperor Devonshell or something. The story is irrelevant, but the graphics and soundtrack are fantastic. Run and shoot everything. If it moves, shoot it. If it doesn't move, shoot it. It might be loot or a checkpoint. Shoot those too. It's the 90s. Shoot everything. Jazz supports all the basic DOS sound cards, the Sound Blasters, the 16, the Pro, the Pro Audio Spectrum, and the Gravis Ultrasound. It also has joystick and gamepad support. With lower quality settings, it'll run on a 386 33 MHz with 4 MB of RAM and a pocket full of wishes. Two will enter the arena, one must fall. Right from the jump, one must fall tries to set the tone with its opening thunder crashes and pumping synth heavy music. As PC fighters go, One Must Fall is easily one of my favorites. It's a simple game and I'm a simple person. There are no wild button combinations to memorize here, it's just punch, kick, jump, and block. And you can use the occasional environmental obstacle to damage your opponent. One Must Fall is another good test game. It supports a, the same range of sound cards as Jazz Jackrabbit with the similar audio quality settings. It claims to be able to run on a 3D6 or better with 4 megabytes of RAM, but you may need more than a pocket full of wishes for that. Hocus Pocus is another great test game for a retro DOS PC. It's an accessible platformer with adjustable difficulty, saved game support, and an unattended demo mode. I've always loved the colorful and cute but ghoulish creature sprites, and it's a perfect lazy, rainy Sunday game. Plug in your Gravis gamepad, turn down the difficulty, and just start zapping away. I don't even know where to begin with Mystic Towers. I hadn't played it until getting this disc, and it really sucked me in. The promo for the game boasts about how much animation this game packs, and for good reason. Every screen seems to be quivering with pixelated life. Mystic Tower supports Sound Blaster compatible sound, keyboard, mouse, and joystick controls and claims to be able to run on a 286 or better with VGA graphics. I almost passed up on trying the game because of the low system requirements. I assumed it would be dated and crude, but as most assumptions turned out to be, it was wrong. I was shocked at how rich but accessible Mystic Towers is. There's a ton of environmental interaction with pushing and pulling items, hitting switches, pushing buttons. Is casting spells and teleporting, but I never felt overwhelmed. This is one I'll be going back to. I had no issues getting Hocus Pocus or One Must Fall to run, but Jazz Jackrabbit and Mystic Towers both failed with a runtime error 200. If you've tried running old DOS software on a faster PC running real DOS, you've probably run into this at some point. This will show up whenever you try to run software written in the Pascal language and compiled with Borland Turbo Pascal 7 on a PC faster than 200 MHz due to a faulty assembly language library called CRT.ASM. You can use CPU slowdown utilities to disable the L1 or L2 cache or lower the multiplier to slow your clock speed, but these perks then introduce other timing quirks like messing up your sound joystick or gamepad timing or graphical glitches. My favorite DOS slowdown utility is David Wong's CPU Speed 2.0A. It can disable and re-enable the cache without requiring a reboot. 
It does well in most scenarios, but let's look at how we can address the issue directly. Programs could be recompiled with a fixed version of the library, but for old games it really isn't an option because we don't have the source code. Since we can't fix the code, we'll either need to patch the software or patch the working memory. To patch memory, we can try one of a handful of TSR programs. Prot200, R200Fix, and TP7P5Fix are the most developed, but may give different results. In my case, R200Fix, Prot200, and TP7P5Fix would all get Mystic Towers running, but still failed on Jazz Jack Rabbit. In terms of patching software, the two Turbo Pascal patchers worth looking at are TP Patch and Patch CRT from Kennedy Software. There are a few others out there, but these seem to be the most developed. The results with TP Patch can be hit and miss, so you probably just want to start with trying Patch CRT. If Patch CRT can't handle it, you may have a compressed executable that needs to be extracted with something like CUP386. Patch CRT and TP Patch both work fine on Jazz Jackrabbit and Mystic Towers. I tend to like to keep my old software unmodified, but patching the buggy Turbo Pascal executables is probably the best available option. When I was a bored kid, I'd sometimes poke through every file on the shareware disks I'd have. Easter egg hunting, I guess. It's not much of interest here, just generic readme and help files, but the installer did catch my eye though. Let's take a look at those .dat files. Well, it's a very well-documented configuration file for this customizable installer. And those are some very easily editable data files. Might be useful to repurpose this into a game launcher later, so I think I'll hang on to it. It's hard to believe that this disc is from 1995. The games feel so fresh from playing them on actual hardware from the time. I guess it helps that Mystic Towers was completely new to me. I'm sort of glad I didn't blow my childhood savings on boutique shareware. SimCity better prepared me for a world of crushing bureaucracy and man-made disasters, and now I have an entirely new classic game to explore.